Hello viewers, I can greet you as uh, the family of the Open Puppet. You are the people that make that make this 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 vision to grow. So thank you. I'm going to discuss briefly collapse of buildings in Nigeria and also dovetail the discussion to collapse of organizational structures in some churches. The first multi-story building I designed over 30 years ago is the 12th floor Shippers Council headquarters on number 4 Park Lane at Papa de Goss. This was some 30 years ago or thereabout. The ground floor has an interesting clear span about 12 meters at about 40 feet by about 30 meters 100 feet without any support in the middle and yet the building has to carry 10 to 11 floors. The building was completely framed in reinforced concrete, all cast in situ, not prefabricated. The day the scaffolds and props were going to be removed, <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> I kept on checking my calculations. I kept on reviewing laboratory results of all materials used. I must have read, analyzed, and interpreted the geological reports several times. Every time a higher floor was about to be, to be added, I would go over my calculations again, again and again, and then pray. Of course, the building had to stand on piles that were founded or driven on layers of rock deeply buried under the earth. Eventually, the building was completed and it is, it is still standing till today, <laughs> to the glory of God. You know, I had, after that, designed and supervised many other multi-story buildings, including the, the 10th floor aqua towers, not too far from Eko Meridian in Lagos, Nigeria, a long time ago also. And this among many other projects. Now, what I learned from engineering practice, particularly the design of complex engineering structures, convinces me that one must have a passion, a loving care, a strong feeling, a feeling of tenderness for a project. You have to treat a project that can affect lives the way you treat a baby. There has to be a sense of harmony, a sort of bonding, a sense of ownership between a designer of, his, of a project and his project. The loving care and tenderness of a delicate project normally brings about an enviable synergy among all stakeholders. This is assuming that all stakeholders are of the same vision, of the same ambition, of the same passion over the project. The moment a member of the project team decides to lock money under the project, that project is put in danger. If the project does not collapse, certain services in the project, electrical, mechanical, social members, etc., may underperform. So in that scenario, the building, even though it may be standing, continue to consume maintenance costs. There, however, is an interesting perspective <laughs> to construction of buildings, and I need to mention that perspective to you. That perspective is saying that there may be some spiritual connotation to the design and construction of a building. Listen to me. Anytime we dig the ground, either to plant seeds or to build projects, we challenge and sometimes violate nature's equilibrium. Talking about building projects, therefore, this is the reason why the interface of dead loads and post loads, wind forces, up movements, accidental loads, etc. 
all of these loads of forces must be connected together efficiently in a manner that will compensate for disturbance of nature's equilibrium. So much so that when turbulence come against the building, it will stand. When the earth shakes, the building must stand. When there's accidents, you know, accidental load, so to we call it, on any part of the building, the building must stand. We have learned a lot of santita, cosita, plantita, cosectita in mathematics, and we do apply the knowledge to achieve notable inventions, including creation of artificial intelligence. Now, I have come to accept, I mean, for me personally, that santita, cosita, plantita, cosectita may after all be a language of the Holy Spirit because I'm bringing my pastoral perspective now into this discussion. There's no doubt in my mind about the existence of a serious interface between intellectual ability and spirituality. For example, an architect has to, has to have divine inspiration before he can conceptualize spatial spaces into functional living spaces. Also, the structural engineer has to have great faith in unseen forces holding down delicate structures and making them safe for human habitation. Talking about building projects, therefore, once a member of a team of stakeholders loved money, one of the projects, something along the line will be compromised. Something that will endanger the project or something that will affect the lifespan of the project will be compromised. The question therefore is, what solution am I, Nina Fafora, preferring to reduce occurrence of collapse of buildings in Nigeria? In the incidence of a building collapse, that is, after fulfillment of all righteousness, perfect design, everything and everything, so to say. If after all this, a building collapses, all stakeholders, that is, the client that do not the project, the contractors, the consultants who design the project, the project managers, architects, social engineers, mechanical and electrical engineers, coins of yours, Subcontractors, subcontractors, and all those officers in government who approved the building and who are responsible for the supervision of the building must be made to suffer temporarily pending a thorough investigation of the cause of the collapse. For example, government may put a temporary lien on the project, and government may also suspend whatever qualifies the consultants and the contractors to operate on projects generally, mark my word, temporarily. Government can take all other actions that may act as deterrent against negligence and whatever they This recommendation may appear harsh and unfair on those who have been diligent in their services. But then, it will encourage the stakeholders to watch over each other's soldiers to ensure that the project does not fail. And this is the best way we can protect them or they can protect themselves. Now, listen to me. The people whose lives are put at utmost danger in the construction site are the professionals, the contractors, and maybe the client or the client's representative. Can you imagine if a building construction collapses on a day, on a day that site meeting is going on inside the building? May God forbid bad things. Amen. In cases of building collapsing, a chronic disease deserves a chronic cure. So the same goes. Hmm. Now, for a working team, the axiom that says a chain is as strong as its weakest link is appropriately instructive here. 
It is one thing to live under the fear of terrorism, live under the fear of kidnappers, live under the fear of armed robbers, live under the fear of accidents on the road, etc., among many other dangers. It is another thing for one to be scared at night or even during the day because of the possibility of a building collapsing over one's head. Well, despite the collapses we are talking about, we have seen, there is still room to applaud many of our colleagues in the construction industry in Nigeria. Quite a number of them are intelligent, they are hardworking, they are resilient, they are forever proactive. Even the way their fees are not paid, or paid partially, or paid poorly, a number of them still remain committed to their projects. They must be applauded. Oh, by the way, the structural engineers who designed the 21-story building that collapsed recently in Lagos, Nigeria, they received part of their professional training in Cisco Consult my form of engineering practice in those days. I salute these two engineers. I don't need to mention their names. They know themselves. When these two engineers saw the unprofessional behavior, or let me call it the misbehavior of the client and the contractor on the project, they honorably withdrew from the project. Hmm. They documented their withdrawal. These two engineers made me proud because they have not lost the culture of professionalism, the culture of selflessness, the culture of contentment, culture of truthfulness, of integrity, and of enduring values. These cultures won't had the opportunity to inculcate in them while they were structural engineers in my practice a long time ago. They could easily have perished inside the collapse, in the, inside the building. May the Lord continue to have mercy. I pray that what we will we eat will not kill you. What we will eat will not kill us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I cannot discuss important issues of life without drawing parallel to narratives common in some churches these days. Organizational structures are collapsing in churches because of a number of things that we want to discuss now. Many instances, when people create vision, bring Holy Spirit inspired ideas into the church. The rulers of synagogues sneer at the ideas. They treat the proponents of great visions with ignominy as if the people have no business serving God. Some other people of doubtful intentions and whose leadership powers are questionable and put in position of authority and are empowered to dominate people's lives. Yeah. We forget that nobody can give what he or she does not have, regardless of the title you bestow on that person. For example, a lot of a crisis that lingered on for almost two years in a church here in California, United States of America. The leadership of the church spent money, thousands of dollars engaged their lawyer and wasted resources for two years and the case was not resolved. When God was however allowed to intervene, listen, a crisis of two years was resolved within two hours at zero cost. The glory of course belongs to God. Let me tell you why the said crisis lingered for two years. I will tell you. Leadership acted on power, authority, and structure. 
ask him who can just sleep. <laughs> All with the absence of love. You know, the absence of love results in absence of influence. Listen to me and hear me out. Nobody is perfect. I'm not perfect. And because many people in leadership are not perfect, this is the reason why serious minded organizations arrange meaningful leadership training and people development programs for their leaders and managers. This is the reason why competent people are put in position of authority. This is the reason why a square peg is never put in a round hole. In many churches these days, once you can make returns, once you can say yes to everything and anything and render the best of high service, you are good to go. <laughs> if you operate the other way, you are treated as a parallel. I said that again. If you operate the other way, you are treated as a pariah. To make matters worse, everybody or anybody who associates with you is oppressed with their potentials denigrated intentionally. It will appear as if some people are bent on turning the church of God into a cult. However, there's good news. And this good news is for those people who truly love God. Matthew 7, 21. The Bible says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So the question I want to ask you, my viewers, is, Whose will are you doing? The question I ask myself all the time. And that's why I pride myself as a son of God, not a man of God. The irony of the sad story is that there are people below the rank of leadership with inordinate ambition who help a lot in hoiling the machine of idiosyncrasies. And in many instances, the tone dictated from the top leads to the results we get in the fellowship. We have seen cases where leadership misbehavior is embraced with the attitude of let by God be by God. <laughs> I learned something at Agar Institute 22 years ago. We were informed that there are some churches where you cannot be promoted to a certain level unless you lose the essence of your Christian values. Uh -huh. If truthfulness and integrity are lacking in church of God in any nation, how can that nation prosper? This is part of the problem that has given birth to a rapidly falling nation in our country, Nigeria. The foundation of all things are spiritual. Psalms 11.3 Psalms 11.3 says, If the foundation are destroyed, what can righteous do? Psalms 11.7 Psalms 11.7 says, For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His captainness beholds the upright. So therefore, for everything to go well, either in the church or in Nigeria or in the country or in any nation for that matter, repentance, restitution, and continuous non-pretentious righteousness are what will move the hand of God towards redemption. May the mercy of God continue to prevail in our lives and over our nation. Amen. Viewers, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Remain the only people. A church without war. God bless.
Et suivez-vous.